Good morning, everyone. We do welcome every all of you, especially those who are first time. I met somebody kanina pagpasok na it was her first time to be. It's her first time to be here. And uh, again, we do want to acknowledge everyone. We are victory, and we always say this: the reason why we exist, the reason why we're having this worship service, is simply because we want to honor God. We are the church that honors God, and it's not just a religious, all right, cliche. We're really serious about that phrase because when people are not honoring God, you know, you can go out of, you know, in a different society where you can compromise, but at the end of the day, it's still, will you honor God in the things that we do? And so we are the church that honors God. At the same time, it doesn't end up there. We are the church that goes out to where God's heart is, and that is to reach the nations of the world. In fact, next month, Tama ba Ms. Leah? We are sending a team, all right, with Mandaluyong that will be sent out somewhere out there. Ni pwede muna sabihin. Nasabi ko ba last time? Hindi, di ba? So, dahil ano siya, creative access, all right. Any nations that uh, we want to make sure that we are like Mission Impossible, <laughs> all right. We are penetrating to that nation at the same time. Hello, hello. Yon. Uh, at the same time, you know, we're doing God's work in honoring God and make disciples. May I know if there are some of you here who have come and joined us for the ver- very first time? Would you please raise your hands, please? Meron ba? Uy, meron po. Uy, meron po. Oh, ba, makaramihan din po. Maraming, maraming salamat. Meron pa ba banda rito? May karamihan banda ho dito? Meron pa ho? Okay. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Mark Constantino. I'm one of the pastors po. And as a pastor, we're also approachable. Okay, hindi ho kami superstar. Wala akong superstar dito. Si Jesus lang po ang superstar. Okay, pag mga pastor dito, mga ano lang, malalakas ang dating kunyari. Okay, mga pakyut, mukhang yayamanin. Okay, pero ano lang po, we're in the same league, alright? You can approach us later on if there's anything you want us to pray for and, you know, to stand with you. Pastor Anthony is here, one of our pastors. We have campus missionaries. All right, na hindi mo kang campus missionary. Tayo ka nga si, all right, we have Melfred uh, who will be in school. And of course, Herlim. All right, tayo ka naman, Herlim. Gusto mo pa tinatawag ka, Herlim, eh. Para, ba't ganun? Kailangan ko ba tawagin para tumayo? Sabi ko na, campus missionary. Gusto ko lang i-acknowledge kila, especially yung mga young people natin na andito ngayon. Aba, grabe. Ayan na. Bakit sila nagsisigawan? Dati, hindi naman ganyan yan kasi galing pong youth camp yan. Galing fervent, so lahat ng mga young people and the volunteers who are part of our youth camp. Can you please stand up? Stand up! Stand up po! Ayan! Plus, stand up lang! Dali! Grabe! Ayan! Yung mga galing youth camp. Ayan! Okay. Iilan lang yan, pero maingay ha. Karamihan po nasa alas dos. Alright? At nasa alas ais. Okay? At meron po silang youth service na wala silang youth service kahapon. Kaya nagkaroon ng party rito sa singles event. Grabe naman! So, iba talaga yung singles ka, ha, kagabi, napapa. Tali tayong ma-provoke, eh, ma-challenge eh. Pag-pray niyo po yung boses ko, baka mamaya mapakanta. Ay, hindi pala, ma- ma- pumiyak ako. Okay, so, alright. Okay, tama na po. We are on our second to the last week of our series, Even in the Impossible. And ne- next week, we're gonna end it. And the following week, after next week is, there's going to be two Sundays that would dedicate to the call of God in our lives. The reason why we exist as a church is really about reaching the next generation. So we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about multi-generation. We'll be talking about the young people. Why is it that there's a need for us, especially at this time, reaching the uh, Gen Z, the millennials, and whatever generations, all right, the upcoming generations, whatever you call them, there is a need for us to reach them out. So we're not just here to reach families. We're after families. It's one of our values. But there is a need, an urgent need for us to reach for the next generation. Kaya nga, Miski, I got saved when I was a student. Miski, you know, I'm on my uh, 50s. All right. I know I don't look like one. But the reality is, nakoy, mayayari naman ako na asawa ko nito. Okay, but... Uh, you know, because we're reaching the young people. Take on that. Okay. Uh, whether we like it or not, we're all going to die. My generation. Oh, <laughs> Pero we have to pass the baton to our children. What happens to our faith diba? after this life that we have? Does your children will follow Christ? 
Would your children's children follow Christ? Okay, ano pa yun? The, the week after next week. So, that's the importance of us reaching. So, we just want to let you know of this, the upcoming series. Let's all stand up in our feet as we read God's Word today in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Here's what the Word of God would say. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they, sa- as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were, and they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? This is the word of the Lord for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're the reason why we come in worship. You're the reason why we are all saved today. You're the reason, Lord God, that in spite of the business of life, you manage to reach out to us. And Lord, even as we hear the preaching of your word, Lord Jesus, whatever your desire is to happen today, may your will be done, Lord. May your kingdom come. Lord, bless the preaching of your word, and we invite your Holy Spirit to anoint and bless your people, inspire them, cause them to be the disciples that you want them to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You go ahead and take your seats. Have you ever been in a situation we're in the unexpected happened when all of a sudden there was crisis that have come and you were caught off guard. Was there any situation that you went through or you experienced that all of a sudden a disaster, something like an accident, something like it involves life and death that you have to act, and yet you were not prepared. This is exactly the narrative or the story that we have read. That's why in those times of crisis, whether it involves money, relationships, it involves politics, in the office, it involves people who would accuse you, it involves your relative who are in the hospital, it involves life and death. The question is, where is God even in the impossible? Lord, are you here? Lord, I know I'm not right. I know, Lord God, that I'm not the person that what the Bible should speak or say regarding who I am. But with this situation, Lord God, will you show up? I don't deserve this. But I can't. I can't control. I can't be in this situation. I needed help. Even in the impossible. Question, where is the Lord? Going back to the story, one day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across the other side of the lake. So they set out. And as they sailed, sailed, he fell asleep. 
And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. Jesus had fallen asleep, and all of a sudden, unexpectedly, a windstorm came, rains, raging waters, splashing and scattering of water. They were moving through and fro with the, because of the waves. And think about this. Jesus was just, was just asleep. I would like to say, unexpected storms in life cause us to have fear and anxiety. When unexpected circumstances that we are not prepared, crisis would have come automatically in our own flesh, fear started to creep in. Anxiety, worries that later on, if we don't have to handle, it would lead to, or worse scenario, depression. Think about this situation. Raging waters, winds blowing here and there, and Jesus was asleep. And the Bible tells us that he has to be awakened. Jesus was sleeping in the midst of, of a storm. Kaya yung mga respectful generations. Hindi, ko na, hindi na ako magsasabi kung sino po kayo. Yung kanta na, Natutulog ba? Ang Diyos, wala sa tono. Okay, wag na nga. No? <laughs> hindi, pang ano talaga, pang generation. Hindi ko, mga kahirap kasi pag, uh, Natutulog ho ba ang Diyos? Yun ang tanong eh, Lord, nasan ka? Natutulog ka ba? Itong senaryo na to, natutulog mo si Jesus, bakit ganon? Di ba, ba't natutulog si Lord? In my opinion po, okay? Raging, di ba, waters, waves, splashing of waters, and the boat was being filled with water. They were about to be drowned. drowned. Think about this. Si Jesus tulog. Hello? Lord, ikaw ba yan? Teka muna. In, a, in, my, in my opinion po, I believe this story, this experience was a setup. I believe God allowed it to happen. Di ko alam parang, Lord, di ka pala, tagdadrama ka rin. Nagtutulog-tulugan ba si Lord, di ba? Kasi tingnan mo, listen to na, di ba tayo, ha? Tingnan mo na, uy, di ba? Lord, tulog. Jesus, tulog. Tingnan mo na, parang, parang hindi, hindi pasok eh. I believe the, it was a setup. He just asked, okay, come on. Let's go into the boat that's crossed to the other side of the lake. Then, he doesn't know storm is going to come right there and then, and he fell asleep. Think with me. It was a setup. Jesus was sleeping. He was sleeping in the midst of the storm. Jesus needs to be awakened. Think about that. Natutulog ba si Lord? You know what? Jesus was 100% God. Very important. But he was also 100% full human, he fell asleep. I don't know with that story kung natutulog si Lord, pero the Bible says, hindi nagkakamali yung Bible. Tulog po si Lord. Pero, natakot po yung mga disciples. Hindi mo naginising si Lord. But eventually, they woke him up. Question, how do we handle an un, unexpected storm in our lives? When crisis hits, circumstances have come that we are not prepared, how do we handle those? In this particular narrative, an unexpected storm that would hit us. Are you ready? Very quickly. Number one, 
Call on Jesus, our help, and deliver when storm comes. Verse 24, and then, and they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. <laughs> and he awoke and rebuked the wind and raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. When Jesus was awakened, what did he do? But what's important is, in the midst of crisis, I want you to take this to heart, when the midst of crisis, the disciples went to Jesus. They woke him up. But for you, who do you go to? Or who do you call for help? When crisis comes, diba, instinct po. Isip tayo yung diskarte. Lalo na kami, tayo mga lalaki. Iisip tayo, paano natin gagawin to? In this scenario, right? It's instinct. That's who men are. We're built that way. We're thinking of solution. We're going to act right away. Paano makakontrol to? Let's do something about it. In that scenario, they can't do anything. It's beyond their control. Who do you go to or who do you call for help? I still remember when we started our church in Victory, that Metro East, we were in Kainta. And uh, we rented a place where we're still staying in that house. And the former owner promised us, Pastor, wag kang mag-alala dito. Hindi binabaha. Lahat babahain, pero tayo, spare ka. Wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we got the right place. This is it. Lord, thank you. We planted a church. You gave us a house. Lord, you provided. The former owner says, there will be no floods. And then, Ondoy hits. Ondoy hits. There was blackout. All right? When I look in our windows, there was flood there. There was a Nissan Sentra car. And it vanished. And the flood is there in front of our house. And it's coming in. Instinct. Taas. <laughs> Yung ref, yung ref po na buhat po namin. Walang isip, isip tara na. <laughs> and I was scared. I was scared for my family. We never experienced po yung baha. Taga UST po ako. Alam niyo na yung story, di ba? Panghapon po ako, pag nagde-declare na ng, uy, wala nang pasok, praise God. Panghapon ako, puta na ako, SM, di ba, city. <laughs> I never experienced yung ganun pong baha. So I was scared for my family. And we started to turn on the radio AM. And people were in Marikina were shouting and they were crying out because the flood had reached second floor and they were on the roof of the second floor. You know whom they were calling? They were calling the president. They were calling the government. And we started praying. The church started praying. True enough, in our congregation, sabi ko, eh, mga taga Marikina po yun, magpa-plant po tayo ng church sa Marikina. Mga taga Kainta, dun sa mga Rizal. Sabi ko, Lord, isang tao lang. Isang tao lang babaha tapos mamatay. Alam mo, lahat kami magsasuffer. Ganun yung church community. Buti na lang, Lord, dun the next, or de, three days, para ako na, locate po ako after two days, three days. I was the last pastor who's been located. There was no full-time staff except for two pastors, myself and Pastor Earl. And the point is, people were crying out to someone rather than God. But the people prayed, and the church got spared. Can you say amen? amen. There was restoration that happened then. In this particular narrative, what did Jesus do as they wake him up? Jesus came to the rescue right there and then. In verse 24, B, he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Jesus directly dealt with the storms. My friends, if we're facing crisis, we call on Jesus, who is our help, who is our deliverer. And he would come and deliver us. And he will be the one to directly deal 
with the storms and the crisis that we face. Can you say amen to that? God knows before this crisis would happen. Whether you're prepared or not, He knows, but He is the answer. And He awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Then all of a sudden, they ceased and there was calm. They went to Jesus, woke Him up. He woke up, rebuked the winds. There was great calm. My friends, when you call upon the Lord, Jesus will answer our prayers. What do you do when crisis comes? What do, you, what do you do when unexpected storm that will hit you? Well, call on Jesus. He's our help and deliver when storm comes in our lives. Can you say amen? Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, Those who call upon the Lord, the name of the Lord shall be safe. God knows when we will be, or when we'll, we will be hit by the storm, God is always with us when storms would hit us. God answers our prayers when we call upon Him. My friends, Jesus alone can bring peace whenever we face storms in life. Can we give the Lord a big, big hand to that? How do we handle an expected storm in our lives? Call on Jesus. He is our help. Deliver when storm comes. Then, what was Jesus' response after he dealt with the storm? So, diniyan niya na, di ba? Parang, Lord, salamat, tapos na. There was peace, there was calm. But it doesn't end up there, the story. Ano po yung response ni Jesus? Sabi niya sa verse 25, he looked to the disciples. He said to them, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? How do we handle an unexpected storm in our lives? Second, move in faith by declaring God's word against the storm. Yes, God is going to deal with the storms and crises in our lives. But there's something that the Lord wanted to see us moving in. Again, I want to say, it's a setup. It is a setup. But a lot of people would just rely on God. That's great. He's going to do it. But what does God want to see in His people? It's about faith. And Jesus demonstrated how to move in faith during an unexpected storm that will rise. What did he do? Jesus rebuked the storm, the winds and the raging waves. My friends, when Jesus asked us about our faith, can we move, our, can we move in our faith? Yes, we're going to trust God. But what does Jesus wanted us to do? Just like he did. He demonstrated how we move in faith by speaking against the storm. Just, a, just exactly what Jesus has done. I will never forget what Pastor Steve, our... What's Pastor Steve Satin? Spiritual leader. He's, the, uh, he's my boss. He's the boss of all boss. He's the president of all our movement. When he started the Philippines, never that he would take that, that realm, not just a title, but a function, overseeing our movement, what's happening in the whole world. And I'll remember during our early years, uh, I think it was around year 2000, when the church was around 4,000, com combination of Makati, you belt, and I think me galeria neata nune or uh, Shangri La. There was a conference and there was a storm that very week. And so, siempre affected kami ba mga provinces, di ba? Uh, Magpupunta rito sa Manila. Alam po sa nabi po ni pastor, see, he got the microphone in front of everyone, he said, With this storm, I have a question to all of you who is in charge? I still remember, who is in authority? And we were all, okay. And pastors, he says, God, 
has given us the authority and power to speak against this storm. And he did. Let's all combine our faith together in the name of Jesus. We declare and speak to the storm to stop. And we're going to continue this conference, guess what, that afternoon for some reason. Metro Manila side were, were raining, but in our place, all of a sudden, the rain stopped and we continue our conference. I will never forget, I said, God, grab it. I want that. I want that kind of faith. We got to move in faith by declaring God's word against the storm. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 23, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Where is your faith? Jesus would ask us in a time of crisis, in a time where an unexpected storm arises, where is your faith? We can speak. To that storm. We could speak against that storm and take authority in the power that God has given us if we don't doubt in our heart but believe in what we say. Believe it and it will come to pass. Are you here with me? I believe this is an equipping point. God wants you to grow in your faith. God wants to level up your faith by understanding His authority his power in our lives that we would not doubt but believe in what we say in prayer and whatever we say, if you don't doubt and believe, it's gonna come to pass. Hello? That's why in every situation, speak life. Discourage, Lord, I declare life. Lord, I declare, Lord, God, in the name of Jesus, we declare, de made that statement just like what Pastor Steve did and truly God is going to answer our prayers. Can you say amen? Our faith in Jesus can overcome our fears and anxiety in times of a storm. Our faith in Jesus can overcome our fears and anxiety in times of a storm. One very important experience. During the pandemic po, yung kasagsagan po ng pandemic na lockdown, and pag na-hospitalize ka, di ba, hindi ka pwedeng pumasok. So, yung po yung patakaran nun. Alam po natin yan, di po ba? My wife, all of a sudden, all right, started to have asthma. So, nag-asthma siya to, eh, wala pong pump pump. And so, it worsens. Okay, at 1 a.m., all right, she started to say, I can't breathe. I need to go to the hospital. And I said, okay. I said, if I'll bring you to the hospital, honey, in the emergency room, I do not know. I might not see you. They will not allow me to get in. That's the risk. My kids, I have to lay down the risk. Are we willing to have this? I will not see, I will not see my wife. We will not see mom. But the doctor, I don't know what the doctor will say. At that very point, sorry. If I don't see what's happening, I don't know what's happening. I wouldn't trust anybody that I would know the reason, what all this. I don't know. Hey, COVID, po, di ba? You know what? We started praying. One, we started praying and make a declaration. And she was really weak and wanted to be in the hospital. They said, honey. Is that what you, we're going to believe God for supernatural. We're going to believe God that God is going to, but this is beyond us. So we started to declare, Lord Jesus, we call unto you. I declare life. I declare your healing. Right now, I rebuke any doubt, any fear, any anxiety and words. What will happen to my wife? Remember that, honey? Andre, remember that? We prayed. You don't remember that? What, you were sleeping? My goodness. You're not Jesus. Don't act like Jesus, all right? So, all right. No, you were... Okay. Bigla bumaba. Okay. Okay. So I started to declare, and guess what? After 20, 30 minutes, she started to regain her strength. 
And she started, yeah, honey, I think the Lord is making me feel better. I know my wife, she's, you know, when it comes to pain, low to- tolerant and pain. But we got to believe God for the impossible. We're going to believe God for the supernatural. Why? Would God would ask us, where is your faith? My friends, this is not victory. This is not the pastor telling you. This is God's word. And he wanted us to act in faith and move in faith and declare the very words of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. How do we handle faith in an unexpected storm in our lives? Number three, choose to fear God than the storms of life. Sa totoo lang, nakakatako, di ba? Naku, may habagat na naman, parating. Naku na naman, may ulan na naman. The other day, di po ako nakapasok do sa gate namin. Nag-hazard po kasi nga, tumaas na yung, yung tubig. Parang nakakatakot na yung gano'n. Pag, oh no, ito na naman tayo. I have to wait for three hours to subside the flood in order for me to get into our village. But here's what the Word of God says in verse 25. He said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid. After he rebuked the winds of the raging, the, the raging winds, and they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even winds and water? And they obey him. They were all astonished. They were marveled. Who is this? One time you're sleeping. He woke you up, and then you, sp- you spoke towards that wind to stop, and all of a sudden, there was peace and calm. They all first feared the storm. But when Jesus came into the situation, Jesus manifested who he is. In our difficult circumstance, Jesus manifested himself during crisis when you cannot control. Jesus would manifest himself in a situation that in our human situation, it is impossible. There is no hope. Jesus would manifest himself in times when we are all fearful and we're all going to give up, they started to have a greater fear of God when they witnessed Jesus' power and authority over the storms. Can you say amen to that? He exemplified. He manifested himself as a God transcendent. Everybody say transcendent. We're not used of that. I'm sharing my... uh, seminary stuff, means our God is above and beyond His creation and exists independent of it. Kaya nga si Lord, Creator, Sovereign, He's in charge, He's control. Nothing will happen if it will not come to Him. Everything has to go through Him. Instead of questioning, Lord, anong ginawa mo? Bakit mo? Taka, taka muna. Let's not talk about that. Instead of focusing on me, Lord, you're sovereign. You are Lord. Sa totoo lang, I don't deserve this life. I could have been dead. Dapat nga hindi ako pinanganak. Eh. Dapat nga. Pero Lord, nandito ako for a reason. We're here because of His kingdom. We're here because of Him. And that's why we magnify His sovereignty. We magnify who He is. We magnify His attribute. We magnify His character in our lives. The true enough, He will manifest whether you like it or not because that's who our God is. And nothing can stop His will in this world. That's why we're here to honor Him and make disciples. Aren't you glad that you're part of this church? Aren't you glad that you are saved today? Yeah, there are circumstances, there are problems, but this will come and go. But the question is, sometimes you don't see it that way. Those problems and unexpected storms and crisis affects us so much that we can't move on because of fear and anxiety and depression. 
that God wants to speak to us because Jesus manifested who he, who he is as the Lord of all. He controls everything. Buti na lang may God. Buti na lang nandyan si Jesus. Buti na lang. Miski unfaithful ka. Nandyan pa rin si Lord. Kaya yung sinasabi natin kanina, dinidik the Lord, faithful God, in the midst of the storm, you're always there. Your love would release and caught my heart. God, the Lord Creator, controls His creation in any natural events. Are you here with me? We can fear God who is, con- who is in control of all things, including the storm. Therefore, we choose to fear God than the storms of life. We choose to fear the God who asks us, where is your faith? Than the storms of life. We're going to honor, worship who Jesus is in our lives. And as we worship him, if there's anything in us that is unsettled, if there's anything in us that you're still clouded with fear, if there's anything inside of us that you're still, you're a worrier, there's uncertainty of, of the future that you're afraid, Lord, ano na sa amin? You know, I'm not against those people who, who doesn't show up in a worship gathering like this. Because of that pandemic, they were affected. And they can't get out of their places until today. That fear has clouded their judgment. But God is saying, where is your faith? Am I not? Powerful enough to set you free from fear? Am I not the God who controls everything that I can deal with what's going on in your own life? I believe the Lord wants to set us free. I believe He is the peace that we need. But He wants to assure you that He is at work in our lives, even today. Can you all stand up today and worship the Lord? And we're going to pray together. Thanks. your voices. Bring your hands for 
I believe the Lord wants to manifest Himself today as our peace. But He wants to deal with our own doubts. That some of you here, you have questioned God. You have questioned God with what happened in your situations. You have doubted God. Yes, you're here. You're worshiping. But wholeheartedly, you're not sold out to the God that we serve. God is not mad at you. But if we want you to know that He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. His heart is free. But God wanted that doubt, that fear to be surrendered to Him whatever you're going through I believe the Lord wants to deal with it but you are to believe what is that what is that doubt and fear that you put a question mark to our God the Lord sees it and the Lord wants to deal with that would you surrender that to God by saying, Lord, I repent for not trusting you. I repent, Lord. But there are questions that I even prayed that, Lord, why is it that it did not happen? Well, there's a greater purpose. There's something greater, more than we could ever thought of and think of. But the Lord wanted that fear, that anxiety, that worry, to be surrendered to Jesus. Would you do that today? 
He's the great shepherd. He is our shepherd, and He knows that. I want all heads bowed down and eyes closed. Lord, today we submit. We lay down to You at the foot of the cross our own doubts, our own unbelief, Lord, our own worries, our anxieties. Lord, we repent. Forgive us for not trusting you fully. Lord, restore our faith right here, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, I pray that you would set us free from all fears and anxiety. If you're going through today for such a time as this, that there is a storm, there's a crisis that you face, I believe that the Lord is our help. I believe the Lord is our deliverer. We all come to God today. We all go to Jesus today. Would you go to Jesus? You, in a personal way, you go and approach God and say, Lord, here I am. I ask you, deliver me, Lord. Deliver me. Set me free from my situation. Right here, right now. Lord, I pray for that miracle. For my brother, my sister, what the, whatever they're going through in life. Before this thing happened, you know already, Lord. And you already know our response. And that's why you're not intimidated. But there's full of joy. You seeing us moving in faith. And I'm asking right now, in the name of Jesus, change our mourn to dancing. Change, Lord God, our sadness to become joyful, Lord. Make your people rejoice once again. So, Lord, here we are. We submit to you our worries, our fears, our anxiety, because you are God who delivers your people. And I declare that today. Deliver your people in the name of Jesus. As you deliver your people, Lord, today I pray that you will give us the faith that we'll be able to move in the way you expect us to move, that we will use the authority, the power you've given us. There's power and authority in every believer that we could speak to that mountain. So whatever we say, it shall come to pass. That we will not doubt in our heart, but believe what we say, it will happen because that's what your word says. And we want to move in faith. Just what you expect us to do. Lord, here we are. Can you just hold your tongue right now? Just hold your tongue. I pray for the tongue that God will just cleanse our tongue, that we're going to speak life. We're going to speak hope. We're going to speak faith. Put your hands on your tongue. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would right now cleanse our tongue and that, Lord God, our hearts will be filled by you with faith, with the Word of God, with the Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you will use this tongue to speak life, to speak faith, to come against, Lord God, anything that is not of you, whether in the office, in the family, in our own personal situation. We're going to speak, Lord God, over that mountain, Lord, and declare faith. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands down. How many of you here, you're, you're, ex, you're, you're in a crisis. You are into a crisis. You're facing a huge storm, honestly, and you're here today. And you would say, that message is really for me. If you're that person, can I pray for you? I want to pray for you. If you're going through such a storm, unexpected storm, or prolonged storm, Lord, I don't know what to would you raise up your hand? We just want to pray for you. Anybody? Just raise up your hand. If you're going through storms, great. Just raise up your hand. I want to pray for you today. Whatever that is, I don't know. It's you and God. But I believe the word is for you. I want to pray for you today. Lord, every brother, every sister whose hands are raising, 
Lord, before this crisis, this storm have hit them. You already know. But thank you, Lord God, that they will find you in the midst of this storm. And Lord, because of your word, you dealt with our own storm. And we're allowing you, Lord God, we're waking you up. We're calling upon you, Lord. Those who call upon the Lord will be saved. Lord, help us deal with this storm. We allow you to come in. And we believe for the supernatural, the miracle of God to come, whether finances, restoration, promotion, direction. We declare, Lord God, that you would take out the burden. And Lord God, right now, speak to our storm. Help us in the name of Jesus. So Father, here we are as one community. We're calling unto you. Truly, those who call upon your name will be saved. I declare that today, I declare that breakthrough, I declare that victory in the name of Jesus, and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand. One last, just one last, we're going to end. How many of you believe that, how many would say God has ministered to you today with the Word of God? God knows what we're going through. But I don't want to miss it. There's some of you here who have come for the very first time. Alam mo si Lord Includer. Si Lord, gusto niya lahat maging anak niya. To those of you who have come for the very first time, you've never prayed this prayer. I want to lead you into prayer. Short lang. Would you repent of your sin? Turn to God. Ask God for forgiveness so that Jesus will come inside of you. Just what we did. I did that when I was way, way back. But the Lord wanted you, the reason why you're here. To those of you who are here, very first time you never prayed this prayer, I want to lead you to prayer. Would you say this prayer in your heart? Would you open your eyes or close your eyes? Say this prayer after me. Can you do that? Repeat my prayer. Say this, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life. I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I invite you to come in my heart to be my Savior, my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and I will be saved today. Lord, I receive the gift of eternal life. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. At the count of three, not yet, at the count of three, if you pray that prayer sincerely, would you raise up your hand at the count of three? How many of you pray that prayer sincerely and God has heard your prayer Raise up your hand. One, two, three. How many of you prayed that prayer? Yes, one. Anyone else too? Yeah. Anyone else who prayed that prayer? Yeah. Anyone else prayed that prayer? Thank you so much. Anyone else? Maybe at the back, I can see you. Oh yeah, there you go. Anyone else? Praise God. Can I do this? We do want to welcome. I want to pray for you personally. Can you come here to those of you? Raise up your hands. Please get out of your seats. Come here. I want to pray for you and speak blessing over what you've done. Salamat lahat na kita sa kamay. Please usher them here, the lady at the back. It's already somewhere there. Get out of your seats, please. Come here. Yes, sir. Thank you. The lady there somewhere. Thank you. Please come here. Just straight up, you know, one straight line over here. Yes, thank you. Dito lang sa harapan lang. Yes, thank you. A lady there. Are you the work person? Go by on. Go by on. All right. Are you in London? Okay. All right. Great. Well, first of all, I, w- I want to congratulate all of you. Sabi po ng Bible ito. If you turn to the Lord today, you pray that prayer sincerely. Alam mo ba sabi po ng Bible? There's rejoicing in heaven because of this decision that you make. Kaya na papalakpakan po kami. I want to pray a prayer blessing, and there will be people who's gonna approach you. That's very important. We do wanna help you. All right, in your next step of faith. I want to pray for you. Panginoon, maraming po salamat sa bawat isa na kayo po, Panginoon, ang pumili sa kanila. Lord, thank you for your conviction. Thank you for what they have done today. I pray for a great experience that they will continue their walk in faith. Lord, we give you glory for their lives. Angels are rejoicing today because of their decision. We give you glory in Jesus' name.
Amen and amen. Marami po salamat. There will be people who will approach you, okay? So make sure uh, you meet with them. Praise God. Let's rip our hands to the Lord. You want to pray a prayer blessing? Guys, listen. Next week will be community, all right? Please bring your friends. We're going to do an altar call and make sure they're all going to get saved. Please bring all of them, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare your provision. We declare your promotion. We declare your victory, Lord. We declare the Holy Spirit to be released upon their lives. Use them for your glory and honor as we get out of this place. In Jesus' name, and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. God bless you for all this miss. Thank you so much.